The model of the vehicle I'm driving right now was introduced in 1967. It was called the Gentleman's Muscle Car. Standard engine was a 440 cubic inch Super Commando rated at 375 horsepower. This particular car is a four-speed transmission and uses a 354 Dana. It also features the one and only 375 power convertible top. This is the 1968 Plymouth GTX 440 Super Commando 4-speed 354 Dana belonging to William Scott Goldberg. On this episode of Graveyard Cars, Mark shows Alyssa how paint can hide a multitude of sins. No matter how good they look on the outside until they come back from the dipper, you don't know what you have. And with Bill Goldberg on his way for the long-awaited reveal, Will, Royal, and Dave race to get the 1968 GTX washed, buffed, and detailed. All buffed and polished and waxed and uh, washed, not in that order. Wow. All in time for the biggest jackhammer reveal Mark has ever taken credit for. Coming up on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. Yeah, driving over to Alyssa's right now to pick her up and give her a ride to work. Apparently, she uh, has had her car stolen. So, uh, my guess is it's not stolen but borrowed, only because she likes to leave the keys in it. Just because I do it, she thinks it's cool, so she does it. Well, I do it because I'm, you know, I'm that big, powerful figure in town that nobody messes with. I'm the Tony Soprano of Springfield, right? So I came out to go to work this morning and my car was gone. Um, my only guess is that it got stolen last night. Her car's kind of like that one from Uncle Buck. That rolled over, kicked in Ford LTD. Yeah, they're both Fords too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Left thanks keys in the car, this. didn't you? Yes, who'd I learn that from? Well, there's a big difference between leaving your keys in the car because you're rupert from Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and when you're Tony Soprano. Okay, That's so why what I'm should I do? Those. Should I make a police report? Don't call the cop. Okay, first off. One of my friends is a DA. Two of them are cops on there. I don't want them knowing you drive some piece of shit from Uncle Buck. Why'd you buy it for me then? Because it's a nice car. It's oh just not God, a nice I'm car nice. for the average world. Let's go. So. You ain't gonna steal my car. <laughs> Life lesson. God, what's that smell? It's the leather. It's leather, okay? Leather oftentimes has a flatulent smell to it. Yeah, I often change Brooklyn's diaper and it smells like leather. Bill Goldberg is an American actor, former professional football player, and a semi-retired two-time world heavyweight champion professional wrestler. Bill Goldberg has a fond attachment to Mopars, which is why two and a half years ago, he reached out to Mark to restore his 1968 GTX convertible. Knowing Mark's skill and expertise, Bill commissioned Graveyard Cars to correct any and all errors made from previous restorations. First, they repainted the interior and exterior of the trunk compartment, restored the dash assembly to its correct appearance, then reassembled and detailed the original numbers matching engine. With the help of Brewers, its original transmission was completely restored while the Ghouls rebuilt the Dana rear end and front suspension. With the car fully assembled using OER parts, Will is racing against the clock to get the car buffed before Bill Goldberg arrives to drive it for the first time in nearly 11 years. William Goldberg? What's that? You know that's his name, William Goldberg? I told you that. Don't start trying to worm your way in. What's his middle name? Uh, mm. William Scott? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. He's William Scott Goldberg. And you're William Scott? Yeah. Scott. <laughs> it's your last name, not your middle Close name. Close enough. 
How's you're, it looking? You're actually looking pretty good. I'm polishing it so it looks perfect, otherwise he'd spear my ass. So I'm making sure with this car is 100% flawless, so he walks in, he'll be happy with what we did. It actually looks Just really about ready nice. to wrap it up and take it outside and give it a bath. What are you hitting it with, just out of curiosity? Wool pad and compound. Well, you gotta go over it with foam. You can't finish right, it. Right, but with... I have to wash it before I can go over it with foam. Oh, okay, all right. Remember, Ooh. you yelled at me because Ooh. I almost went over That's it scary. with foam. You said don't ever go wash, get all the compound. Make sure this what? thing is on a Ritz. What does Make that sure mean? Make sure this thing on a Ritz, I don't know. It means perfect. I have a reveal plan for this thing. An epic, classic Mark Warman from the yeah. fertile mind of Mark fertile? Warman. <laughs> my mom says I have a fertile mind. My mom says I'm perfect. Yeah. Right. Everybody's mom, every, right, every moms right. always think their sons are perfect. I have got an epic reveal for this car, unparalleled in the history of graveyard cars. Mark overhypes everything. Just having Goldberg here is cool enough. I don't think we need all the fluff and whatever extra little silliness he wants to do. You, you play along with them, and I'm sure it'll still, it'll still turn out great. Because you're not gonna wanna miss the reveal, period. Is that good? Oh, it's off the charts. So if it's ridiculous, I'm just gonna walk out. Oh, you're well, I'll dance out, we all, we'll, we'll dance out the door if you don't like it. Well, I'm telling you, this is the one right here. Do I get like a hint or any? When I'm at the Emmys collecting my award for it, I'll be sure to give you a shout out. For what the? To William Scott, Scott Goldberg or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure because it is Bill Goldberg's car, the reveal is gonna be something special. So we'll see what he's got in store for this one. Um, I hope it's exciting. <laughs> All right. Flip flop. Back to Buffin. Flash mop. Flippity zoo. I have just a couple spots left to buff on the car. I've already kind of double checked everything else, and then I'm gonna pull it outside and give it a wash. Despite Alyssa's stolen car, she's teaming up with her dad to look over another GTX that's just been disassembled. The crew has several GTXs in the shop, but coincidentally, this 69 GTX is the same color as Goldberg's 68 model. A car is square from side to side. A car is symmetrical. There's a few that have been built that aren't, but you should be able to take and cut a line down the middle of a car and it's mirrored. If you look across this plane right here, this upper cowl panel, and match it to this plane here, does that core support look level with the cowl? No. What looks wrong with it? Well, it's a little lower. Okay, on which side? On the passenger side. My, my thinking is this car suffered what we call in the business blunt force trauma. And it probably got hit over the top of the frame rail up high. Most of the damage is from there up. This right here doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like it's been wadded up and pulled out. That hole's still round. So that tells me everything was what we call a high hit. Okay. Probably laid into here and then just pulled out with come alongs and dozers and got out to where it's supposed to be. Will finishes up the wash on Bill Goldberg's GTX. Used the pressure washer, got it detailed out great, and then brought it back in. Now that it's washed and polished, Will delivers Goldberg 68 GTX to Dave in the assembly shop. Just got all the brakes bled on this here. All the fluids are good other than the power steering. Okay. Just got to get it Let's outside. Take that off so we don't forget. David Ray. Yeah. Outside. Hey. Hey. Mr. Will Scott. Wow. Wow, that looks beautiful, man. It is sharp. Wow. Yeah, what a difference that made, it's huh? It's all buffed and polished and waxed and uh, washed. Not in that order. Wow. Wow, what a difference. Yeah, it came out really nice. Will, you clean them up That's nice. That's awesome. Yeah, you I do, do what I can, Royal. He did a fabulous job on the paint. It looks, it looks yeah. fantastic. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was cleaned up before when we took it for that test drive here a while back, so we'll just kind of go over and take some of the fingerprints yeah. off of it and uh, run a, a vacuum around in it, and I think we're 
we're pretty that good to go. Good. Yeah, we'll clean up the inside, clean, go over the seats, get all, all the dust out of there and stuff, you know? You gonna make Royal do it? Nah, I'll help her. Oh. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Now, Mark said he's got a huge reveal for this. Have you heard anything? No, I haven't heard anything. It's all it's all news to me. I was kind of wondering how they were going to set it up. I mean, just playing Bill Goldberg here is going to be big enough, right? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're good to go, buddy. That yeah, sounds good. Thanks, buddy. You're Looks welcome. awesome, Will. We're going to finish the detail part. Will's done the paint. Now we'll do the interior glass and the engine compartment. Well, what do you want me to do, windows? Yeah, yeah, if you want to. You know, I mean, there's not a whole lot of cleanup. It's pretty good. Mark and Alyssa continue documenting the 1969 GTX. Look at the layers of rust. Somebody has put, for whatever reason, Bondo that they laid down over the rust just to finish the edge of this rocker off, which is weird because it's all covered with a fender anyway. You see right here? You see these cracks? This is undercoating that somebody shot over the outside of this frame rail, not the factory. I can tell by the consistency of it. But look at how this whole thing looks like it's caved in because it is caved in. Probably when it took its shot over there, the whole front end went over to one side. And back here, what happens when my hand goes over to one side? That, that skin has nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. It buckles. That's what happened right there, the exact same thing. But instead of straightening it, fixing it, cutting it open, metal finishing it off, putting it back on square in the car, they just got it where it would hold the fenders in place, look halfway decent, and they shot undercoat over it. Like you put carpet over a crappy floor to hide a bunch of sins. So if you look here, you see the daylight through there? Yeah. Yeah. That's the inner wheelhouse, completely Jeez. rotted out. The problem is that they've scabbed these layers. You see all these layers of stuff here? Yeah. There shouldn't be any layers. This is the wheelhouse here. This is stuff they threw over the top of it to make it look better, to hide the holes. There's the bottom of your floor we talked about. Look at the size. That's fiberglass right there. Yep. And that's just sure. what you see. That's what you see on a regular basis. See these frame rails right here? Look at how rotted and pitted they look. Now, there's no actual holes that I can see, but it's paper thin. I could probably punch a hammer through that frame rail with no trouble. So we'll end up putting both rear frame rail sections in, whether we need whole ones or sections. Is this going to be one of those vehicles you're scared to see what it comes back to? This is going to be like? like the other three that are in here right now that are up on frame racks having every single panel replaced in them. <laughs> That's what uh. it's going to be like. Royal and Dave begin the final detailing on Bill Goldberg's 68 GTX. So, Royal, what's, what's Goldberg like? You got a chance to meet him. I never met him. <laughs> oh, he's a blast. Is he, is he's he... fun to hang out with. Yeah, is it really intimidating, though, you know? But no, he's a lot of fun. Is he's he? a lot of fun in person. Oh, cool. Yeah, because that's all I've seen is, you know, from what I've seen on TV. But he seems uh, pretty intimidating, you know, because he's oh, just yeah. got that. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, uh, he's still a big guy. He hasn't wrestled for a while, but he's still a big guy. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, what kind of surprise they're, they're dishing up. The Christine one was really cool, so it'd be kind of neat to see what they uh, put together for, for Goldberg. Oh, yeah. It's fun to be a part of this project. While the guys continue the detailing on Goldberg's GTX convertible, Mark and Alyssa continue to document the very similar 1969 GTX convertible. So when you're coming along here like this and you see this seam and it looks like it's bad, Not unlike the hammer, it's bad. <laughs> I was like, by Curious George, I owe you a hammer, buddy. But it is an all body numbers matching, numbers engine, numbers transmission, 69 GTX, B5 blue over B5 blue with a white top, one of 9,862 made. It deserves to come back to life. But this is a good example of what how ugly things can be when they're together and you can't see them. Look at that frame rail right there. Yep. You come along here and it seems like it's bad. That's because it is bad, all right? So that's your education on how easy it is. Because if you look at it from here, it's beautiful. Yeah. It looks awesome. It's pretty, it's blue, and it looks great. But when you actually take its clothes off, not, like, not unlike a lot of people think, no, not like that. Things get weird. This car. <laughs> kind of like this. This car got weird. You don't want to see a GTX in that condition with its clothes off. All right. All right. Okay. Education complete. For this particular car, though, in the world, the one that we're caring about, I wasn't surprised. I had a feeling most of these things would be there. I already bid it to disassemble it, to strip it, and plan on replacing a ton of metal on it anyway.
anyway. So no big shock for me, no big whoop. It's what we do every single day. But I'd hate to have somebody pay a royalty for all the things they think are done and then have to go out and have them redone. Now that Royal and Dave have nearly completed the detailing on the 1968 GTX convertible, Mark prepares to call Bill Goldberg with the good news. Bill Goldberg's car is completely finished now, so I'm getting ready to go in and give him a call, let him know the good news, uh, try to coordinate a time that he can come out and take delivery of it. Camper. I have him on my cell phone, so. Could have just texted him. Goldberg's garage. Mr. Bill Goldberg. Mark Warman. Be me. Mark Warman, how you doing, sir? Good, my friend. How are you? Everything's good, partner. Just busy. He's been patient with us. Uh, we ran a little bit over on the build, but uh, as anybody knows it, some of these things are just out of our control. I have some awesome news for you. You've been very patient, but I'm calling to let you know that you're beautiful. One of only 375 68 GTX 444 speeds is completed by your friends at Graveyard Cars. <laughs> man, I tell you what, I couldn't have got any better news today, man. I, I, I can't thank you enough. Oh, that's awesome. We've got something kind of special planned for the reveal of the car to him. So, again, very exciting. I have a little bit of information for you. I can kill two birds with one stone. Oh. Coming up to Portland uh, to see the car is one thing. But I will also be scouting location for our new movie that will be uh, shot in Portland. And, you know, ironically, we need a bunch of cool Mopars in that movie. And I was going to ask if uh, you, by chance, wanted to take part in it. He, he, I think he's looking for a co-star, you know, and that, that's awesome. So I want to just make sure I got this straight. Um, you're kind of asking me if I, if I would like to be involved in a feature film. Well, kind of, yeah. Uh -huh, that's, uh -huh. that's, that's, I guess that's what I'm asking. Okay. All right. Um, it's exciting, you know. I mean, I haven't been in a feature film before. I mean, I, I, I quote them all the time, but I haven't actually been in one. I'd love to do that. What are you doing? I plan on nailing this role. Hey, you in a future feature film, I mean, we might even get you in a Speedo or something. Well, I'm sorry. The phone cut out. Did you say Speedo? <clears throat> So I am honored to be a customer, and my friend, I cannot wait until I get there and see that beautiful car. So thank you, great. You're you're very welcome. We'll talk we'll talk soon, Bill. You got it, partner. Be well. Okay, guy. Bye bye. Yeah. Oh, that that was Bill Goldberg. Okay, guys. Uh, being that we have three convertibles uh, in the shop. Uh, that we're working on uh, this beautiful 68 GTX with a 440 Super Commando uh, four-speed car. We got a 67 GTX convertible, 426 Hemi four-speed. Then we got a one-of-one one 69 Roadrunner 426 Hemi automatic in that beautiful Q5 uh, seafoam turquoise paint. Uh, but we thought we'd show a couple things, you know, of how it operates and to do and what not to do with the convertible top. As you can see, this material here is uh, what they call like a crush vinyl. Uh, you see some of them are like a canvas, they're really scratchy. Uh, they call those style a pinpoint. And our 67 GTX actually has a pinpoint top, uh, but in 68 they converted it over to a crushed vinyl. So it's exactly like a, a vinyl top that you would see on a hard top, but it's just in a convertible top form. And of course it's a lot thicker, it's got a heavier canvas uh, backing to it. As you can see everything's all stitched together, all your seams are all stitched, a lot of it's heat sealed. And so keeping it clean is, is like the A number one thing. They always recommend using like a mild soap and water uh, to clean it, but they do make an actual cleaner for a convertible top. We're gonna show here how the convertible top operates. See, when you flip down, you got your latch and you'll pull your latch down like that and it just pops loose. Well, on the driver's side, whenever you flip down that visor, there's a sticker right there saying caution. This car is equipped uh, with a convertible top with a glass back window. And so if we pop the trunk up here, you can kind of get a little better view of it. And this right here is your well liner. It's really soft. And you can see, you know, this is like where the top is gonna fold into is into this well liner. Put a big box or something in there and you drop that top down. As Soon as that back window hits there and all that weight comes, it's just gonna shatter your back window. So they put that warning there to double check, make sure you got nothing in the way. So the main thing being, you don't wanna have anything in the way uh, underneath your well liner here when you fold the top down. 
because you got a really good chance of breaking that back glass. Okay, so let's go ahead and run her down. So we got our clamps undone on both sides here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and flip our switch. Our top switch is nice. You don't need the key on to actually operate the top. So we'll go ahead and flip it in the down position here. And she starts popping up and you can stop pretty much anywhere you want and it'll kind of hold a little bit. But as you can see, it folds all the way down. That glass drops down first, then everything else just starts stacking on top of it. And then down she goes right into that well. You can see now it's stiff and you can feel that glass right there. So you do have a little bit of room to slide something under there where it won't hit. But if you get something too tall, odds are that glass is gonna hit it and break. That's primarily how she goes down. Then of course, uh, whenever you're done with that, you would put your boot cover over the top of that to hide all your mechanism and keep all the dust and everything out of that. Uh, so just a quick sum up, keep it clean, you know, keep the, the top clean so it doesn't stain and get messed up. Keep it out of the sun, you know, for prolonged periods of time. And if you do, buy yourself a really nice car cover, uh, well worth it. So there's a little tech tip for you folks at home uh, that might own a convertible. Take her easy. No par, no car. With Bill Goldberg's visit looming, work doesn't stop in the body shop. The 1969 Charger RT General Lee is deep in the metalwork stages of its restoration. This is the same car that was featured in the Dukes of Hazard feature film and holds the record for the longest freeway jump of any General Lee in TV or movie history. Things are going very fast on our General Lee. Uh, Ryan has the front inner structure completely, as you know, cut off and welded back on. There's a few detail points. He's just finishing up on the windshield pillars and the rocker areas, and then that's done. So I've cut George loose to go ahead and get the back half of the car cut off. So one of the quickest things that you can do to save time is completely amputate the back half of the car if all of it's getting replaced. You save it because there may be intricate pieces that you need, but one big cut allows you access to all the spot welds that you need to be able to drill out on a, on a minute by minute, section by section basis. So I'm just here to go around it with him, mark those areas out. Uh, should go fairly quickly, fairly smoothly. He'll get just basically the saws all out and, and start whacking on panels. Okay, I see you've got marks, so is this your intention? Of coming up through the sail panel and the upper deck filler? Yep. Because we are replacing that. So when you cut that, you're destroying that. You know that, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Right. I figured I'd leave it for now for the height-wise because I'm going to cut out the whole entire wheelhouse. So it'll keep my height. So when I put the new wheelhouse in, I'll be able to oh, butt it up. Yep, I see what you're doing. Uh, so where are you coming? You're coming right up through here? Is that what the paint mark is? Yep. So we're going to come through here like this, and then you're going to just go to the outside of this. That'll get you your access to your spot welds, right? Yep. And then just blow the whole thing off of there. This particular car, as you know, had so much trauma, so much blunt force trauma to it, that literally everything throughout the car was misshapen. The pieces that we've saved, we've saved well, but the ones that are sacrificial, those are the ones we're replacing. And then where you cut through the rails at? I'm going to come right through here. Yep. All the way up through here, save Beautiful. all that. Yep. Just like a line. Just exactly, okay. So, and then you'll have to dissect out the rest of the trunk pan and the, and the frame rails for yep. that. Okay. And you know this is the part that's really important right up here, this has got your numbers in it. So we're saving and replacing this entire trunk gutter. I've got new ones, but I would rather just put this entire piece in there. That's do that. not a problem. Is that all right with you? Okay, so you're gonna mirror the same exact cuts on the other side, and uh, the car's established at the front. Uh, by the frame rails in the rack, so you shouldn't have any height problems. Nothing should move when you cut this stuff off. So basically, I've given George the green light to go ahead and cut the back half of the car off. That's what he's doing now. We got a, a Miller plasma cutter that makes it a real nice, clean job. Uh, the General Lee's gonna be back uh, getting this new sheet metal before you know it. With no hope of recovering her stolen car, Alyssa takes the opportunity to consider upgrading to something a little more Mopar. Will. Yes. I got something to show you. What is it? My new car, maybe. Or What's wrong with the Merc? It's four doors. Well, I don't have the Merc anymore. Why not? <sighs> my dad didn't tell you. No, I haven't seen it. Seriously, my dad didn't tell you? No, I haven't. OK, so this morning I woke up, and it wasn't there. So somebody stole your car? Yes. It's Granted, I left the keys in it, and the cup holder. I forgot about them last night. So, so you actually left your keys in your car, and then somebody actually was walking by and says, ooh, I want that piece of car, hops in it, there's your keys, they're gone. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's crazy. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. So you're wanting this? So I'm hoping that my dad will go look at it with me at lunch. Is your dad buying it for you? No, I just want him to look at it, make sure I'm getting a good deal. 
now. Okay, he's not gonna go help you. Why do, why do you say that? He doesn't help anybody but himself. Okay. If you want that car, you have to go do it by yourself. Will's probably right about my dad not helping me out, so I'm gonna go down on my lunch and take a look at the car by myself, because if I wait for my dad, I'll probably be waiting around for another year. Uh, we got Mr. Goldberg's 1968 GTX completely finished. I made the phone call. He is on his way down here right now. This is really cool. He had to fly in from San Diego to Portland. He's driving down this morning to come down and check out his car. There he is. Billy G. Billy G. <laughs> Billy G is not my wrestler. Yeah, he is. Hey, I was Billy G. You were pushing. <laughs> What's up, buddy? I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting, my man. Good to see you, partner. Notice I lost 25 pounds. Yeah, where'd he go? I am a Mopar guy, absolutely. Mopar, no car. Um, the, the reality is I like the individuality of the cars. Um, I like the fact that they're oddballs, because I'm an oddball, and I think I represent the brand well. What's happening, buddy? Not much, partner. Good to see you. Just been busy. Got the shirt, sweatshirt I sent Well, you know, I like to uh, to promo good God, guys. That's a 2X. It's still too small. What are you doing? I ripped it. I had to rip the neck <laughs> oh, just to get over damn. my big head. You're huge, man. You've been working out again. I'm trying. I'm trying. Got a little movie thing coming up. How do you feel about making your uh, big I, screen day? I love debut? it. Yeah, you texted me that, and I uh, shared that with everybody upstairs. Very, you know. You know, not only am I am I here to, to see the car, pick up the car, but I'm here to scout out locations a little bit. And I'm I'm gonna put Mark through the ringer because I want to put him in the movie. Yeah. Billy G, what's up, Billy? Yeah. 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 What's up, buddy? All right. Here. How you doing? Good to you. meet you. When Bill first showed up, it was awesome. You're good. <laughs> oh, I want to shake your hand. You what's up, bro? Oh, good. good to see you, man. Oh, I was amazing. I mean, just a super yeah. nice guy. Didn't feel you know that nervousness that you would feel you know normally around a celebrity. That's yeah. easy. Clutch Watch your ears you know inside it. your head. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> There's a long, sordid tale about this car. I bought it, and then somebody approached me. They really wanted the car bad, paid me a good amount of money for it. Fast forward about two years after that sale, I heard that the guy was keeping it outside. So I kind of went behind his back and had my wife go buy it out from under him. <laughs> Funny story there is she pulls up to a stoplight, and... Uh, She's sitting there idling, and all of a sudden, a, a, a family of mice run out in the car. So needless to say, it wasn't being kept the way it should be kept. First Mopar I ever had, yeah. Means a lot to me. Uh, the reveal I have uh, orchestrated in my mind and kind of drawn out, choreographed, if you will, is probably nothing uh, short of brilliant. And I'd like to think that I'm a, you know, a, a very passionate car owner. And uh, Mark and I came up with a deal, and uh, the rest is history. I may have a 6,500 square foot garage with 18 cars, but I don't have a team of 15 people to come in and work on them. I work on them. Um, I was restoring the car myself when I got the phone call from Mark's people. And with so many cars and not enough time, I'm greatly appreciative that he helped me out with it. Um, at the end of the day, if it's one year, two years, five years, don't quote me on that. Um, I don't care because at the end of the day, you know the work is done properly. And um, I'm greatly appreciative of the help. He is going to be so thrilled when he sees his car, especially with this entrance. I got a feeling this is gonna be a very, very special moment. All right, Classic. I am gonna go get ready. You ain't going nowhere. I wanna you just stay there. stand right here. All right, I will be back. I can't wait for, for Goldberg to see his car. I actually had a chance to work on it. I helped put the interior in. So I'm really excited to see what they he thinks about it. it. Did you just have to two Kind years of like being backstage six before. Six months, two years, and seven months. Hey, Bill, it's like being backstage before a big fight, huh? Actually, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, big one, yeah. That's what I do. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds good. It's like being backstage before a big fight, huh? Actually, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, big one, yeah. That's what I do. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds good. In this corner, with a record of one in 375, standing nearly 53 inches tall and weighing 3,790 pounds, the undisputed leader in luxury horsepower, the gentleman's muscle car, the sting outside the ring, the muscle behind the hustle, the 20-foot blue horse. <laughs>
Mark comes up with some good <laughs> period, end of story. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about entertainment. Obviously, he's got to present me with my car, but why not do it in a way that um, provides some uh, humor and entertainment for the people who are watching? It's a nice added touch. It was really cool. Look at that <laughs> thing. Oh, my god. The feeling I had was replicated every time I went out to the ring. Nervous anticipation, uh, excitement and uh, the general giddiness that any kid would feel on the, the night before Christmas. Isn't that gorgeous? How does the interior look? <laughs> yeah. I listen to the interior, interior in with Dave. looks great, yeah. along with everything else. I just wanted him to know that I did help a little bit on his car. <laughs> you did more than I did. Really? Yeah. I didn't cool. do, we didn't do the body and paint. So, well, you did more than I did. It is time for the Graveyard Ghouls and Mr. William Scott Goldberg to hop in the 68 GTX, go for a little drive around town. You drive, take me and the ghouls out. We'll buzz around the neighborhood a little bit. Let's what do, do you it. think of that? All right. The last time I drove this car was probably 2005. So it's been quite a long time, about, you know, a, a good 10 years at least since I've driven this car. All right, <laughs> let's take this mother humper out. Let's go. Let's do it. See that car right there? I'm gonna drive the shit out of it. That's what I'm gonna do, because that's what they're made for. Oh yeah, I'm really excited. That's what these cars were built for, tearing up the streets. This is awesome, guys. Just awesome. Great job, gentlemen. I'm real excited, and I hope he tears the tires off that thing. I mean, like Royal said, that's what they're made for. I mean, you get these things out and enjoy them, you know, and that's what he does, and that's what makes it that much better, you know. Car runs great. Um, it's a very sound car, very solid car. Bill loved it. That test drive went absolutely perfect. Boy, it, it drives so nice. That motor runs so good, and it's quiet. You know, I was surprised, you know, big B-body convertible, you'd think that thing would have a little bit of noise or something to it. It's a solid, solid car. It was a blast riding with Bill. The uh, rain held out. Yeah, yeah, we got lucky, it was, it was yeah. awesome. <laughs> a little chilly with the top down, but yeah, but it was great it was having the season. Down. Yeah, we were all in back. Me, Will, and, and Royal, we had, a, we had a blast back there. It was a lot of fun. Goldberg had a lot of fun driving the car. The guy's a lunatic, whatever, you know. One thing I will say, he drives it like he owns it. He doesn't care. He stab and steer, doesn't care what happens. And he handled the car well, because that car's a handful. At one moment, he reached out and grabbed the camera lens at 40 miles an hour, which could have killed everybody in the car. Oh, God, please, sweet Jesus. Oh, Mama Chickapee. Oh, Mama Chickapee. Oh. This ain't my first go <laughs> roping. OK, Mommy, Daddy, Papa. I think Mark was about to wet his panties. Yeah, he was in full fetal position in the front seat, curled up. I mean, he was, had a hold of his knees. It was, it was epic. It was awesome. Everybody got a rosary. <laughs> I got a, a heavy foot. All right. It will do. stop us in a heartbeat. Awesome. Great. I love it. Man, this thing drives good. <laughs> it's cool, you know, you get in every one of your cars and it takes a couple minutes, but once you go through the gears and feel the brakes, feel the steering, you remember everything about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You bet. You yeah. know, they're all different. Yep. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, Papa Bear. Bill's not all there in the head, all right? So he's took a lot of shots between the football and the wrestling and stuff, and his ability to discern between danger and, and grave danger is, is impossible, apparently. So, not that that bothers me. How's your blood pressure there, <laughs> Mr. Foreman? Oh, uh, sweet Oh, <laughs> uh, Ah! <laughs> 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 is wrong with you? <laughs> Good television, sir! Screw <laughs> you, you bald son of a... 
<laughs> I was concerned, all right? There's a big difference between scared and concerned, all right? One is defecation, all right? Concerned, you don't cuckoo your pants, all right? Scared, you're filling your Fruit of the Looms with fudge. Well, thanks, Bill. That's, uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You better not. I'll be back. <laughs> That's the kind of guy you want. That's the guy I, I want. That's why we're doing I our show. I drive my car. Oh, You're the crazy one, awesome. I'm the same cop. That's how it is. Why <laughs> bat <laughs> crazy son of a <laughs> Because Alyssa didn't get a chance to ride the first time, I'm gonna let her go ahead and go for a drive with Bill by himself, so. You're on your own. I'm done, you go. You must really I'm appreciate excited. what I do and who I am to, to trust me with oh, your Oh yeah, dog. go knock yourself out. I hope you crap your pants. But I heard that he scared the crap out of my dad the first time around. He's so insane. I'm sad I missed that. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I think the world of your father, oh. no doubt, so I will take the utmost care of you. He's such a nice guy. He's so down to earth. He is. He's like a you know, big kid, the big heart. It was a lot I of fun agree. to be around him. We talked a little bit about his uh, NFL career. I didn't know you did professional football. Yeah. I didn't know you were in the NFL. That's, that's really cool. Played for five years before I got into wrestling. I grew up watching wrestling, and that was like what me and my dad did was watch it. And he actually made me stop watching it because I kept doing choke slams on my ah. cousin and like tried to do all the moves on my cousin because I was the oldest. So he made me stop watching it. I can only imagine how many parents are like that. So we just got done with our driving stuff. Uh, had a blast doing that. I want to take a chance and show him the new shop. When he was here before, we were at the old place, which really kind of, it was all we had at the time, but this is so much more, and I want him to see that my vision is coming to fruition. So this is our body shop, our paint booth over here. So your car spent a little bit of time getting some touch-ups in it. So this is the graveyard. It's changed a little. Remember we had some cars out in the gravel before? Changed a little. <laughs> we got 75 cars setting out here. This is my little getaway from everything in here. <laughs> But you wonder why I put a couple pounds back on. We put in a full kitchen grill. Look at you. So yeah, this is our kind of little, and this is great team build stuff. We put in a little, little Good walk God, in. Good look <laughs> yeah, at you. Yeah, I know, it's sad, isn't it? Pathetic little group. And it's all under the justification of, well, we gotta watch our episodes. Oh, well, there you have my... it. Hey, it's nice, isn't it? I it mean, remember is. when we had this conversation years and mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you were the one that was saying I was kind of at the beginning of the table, and now I've come to the table, and it's, we've earned it, so I'm not, I don't play it. I, I don't have to play it up because it is what it is, but I don't think I have to play it down either. No but question about we've it. Made I mean, it what you guys and, have is, is what you've worked for. We've worked really I mean, hard for it. Nobody gave you anything. I've spoken to you many a time mm -hmm. throughout the process, mm -hmm. and whether it's this guy or that guy or that sponsor, and then, and then, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, you you guys have been able to put a television show together and do a business that, I mean, it, you should be extremely proud of. It's nice to get that reinforcement from somebody like Bill Goldberg that we're on the right track and we're doing the right thing. So that, that made me feel very, very good. We made it. You guys, uh, you guys have, have, have definitely arrived. I mean, <laughs> what you guys have done to this place and the cars that you're pumping out, uh, it's unbelievable. Mike, uh, yeah. Has have done a hell of a job, and I'm just I'm just honored that you would take my car in and, and do what you well, we're did. We're glad with it. to loading your car up here in the next week, putting it in our trailer. We're going to run it down to you, so you decide if you want to come back empty or full. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> you kidding me? There's no doubt. It's uh, it's it's already ready to go. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming up. I know you're short time, but you're back in the fall. Uh, talking about a motion picture together with us. <laughs> He's been working on this role here at Graveyard Cars for 54 years. Bill, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we, have, we, we gotta cut it off. Say here. goodbye to the knuckle. Uh, I don't even know yeah, where we're going from there. Anyway, hey, hey, motion picture. Well. Thank you. Talking, Thanks again. talking probably uh, opening weekend at <laughs> oh. $100 Is he watching? Hey, hey, hey! Oh, hey. oh my God. <laughs> Wait, now? It was great to see Bill again. Um, I know he's gonna be Wait. coming up. I know he's gonna be coming up here, I think in September, he said, so. It's, it's sad to see him go, but it's nice to know that he'll be back here in a few months, and I think with a new car. So, because it yes. looks like we'll be seeing more of him as yes, the years come. So that's car pretty exciting. We're doing the whole car, so we're not just doing the put together. Thanks, Bill. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, Bill is the American dream 
lived out by means of having the heart and the soul to not only believe in something, but have the courage to believe in it and move forward. And so for, for me to Bill Goldberg, a big thumbs up, you're a good guy. Let's get back to work. Yep, sounds good. All right, we've got a oh, job to do. I don't do. want to go to work. got to make more greens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to work. The green maker. Fun's over. Fun's over. Well, lunchtime, isn't it? Alyssa started the week with a stolen car, much to the disappointment of her father. The team rushed to complete the detail and buff on Goldberg's GTX convertible. Meanwhile, Mark and Alyssa documented a wrecked and poorly restored 1969 GTX convertible. This car suffered what we call in the business blunt force trauma. Bill Goldberg arrived at the shop and was blown away with a smoke-filled ringside reveal of his 1968 Super Commando GTX convertible. To show his appreciation, he gave Mark and the ghouls the ride of their lives. Oh, mama chicken oh, mama chicken <laughs> with Goldberg on his way back home and Mark's blood pressure coming down, Dave informs Alyssa that she's got an unexpected visitor. You found it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I accidentally found it at 4 o'clock this morning. Where'd you find it at? Uh, in your driveway. Wait, what? I'm Stan Lynch. I do construction, repossession, private investigating. You get to take pictures of naked people through fence holes without getting arrested. <laughs> Where can you do that? I was doing a repo. At I got the my wrong house? car. I, I got the wrong car. It was an accident. How do you accidentally repo a car stand? Well, it's classified. I personally think that it's my dad. So let's back up a year ago. I stole my dad's car. So when my car comes up missing today, I mean, it only makes sense that it's my dad behind it trying to further teach me the lesson about stealing his car. I'm here today because uh, a friend of mine was really irritated about this nasty car that his daughter's been driving around. His friends have been seeing it, and he wanted it gone. OK, well, thank you, but I actually already went and got my new car. You did. I did. I got my new car. Love my new car. It's like driving around a rental car. I've never had anything this nice. I'm not mad at him. In the day, this worked out in my, in my benefit. I'm not sure what lesson I was supposed to learn from this, so thanks, Dad. So where do you want this? I don't want it anymore. So where, where, where did I put it? Uh, you can keep it. Great. Um, well, thank you. I'm sorry that you went through okay. all that, but I don't, I don't really understand how, we got, how you got my address. That's still confusing to me. Well, I, I'm going to talk to somebody. Yeah, me too. People get too caught up in trying to find somebody to blame for something. They're always looking for a villain, right? OK. I would say that, let's say I did hypothetically have Stan pick up the vehicle. What was netted as a result of it? My daughter, who's never bought a car on her own, bought her first car on her own. She went out. She found somebody to co-sign for it. She called the dealership. She went down and road tested the car. She negotiated the deal. At the end of the day, um, it, was, it was a great lesson, you know? And, I, and that's what I do. I give lessons.